Hey everyone, it is New Build Monday and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the video I just put out uh, last week on Friday. We talked all about Design Q and today I was also at Design Q helping a client of mine choose their uh, finishings because because it's just the one guy I was able to go in with but when there's two we cannot go because of the COVID protocols. So I am going to talk today about upgrades and which are worth doing. You've now removed your conditions, you have um, also picked your appliances out and now you're ready to pick your finishings. So my biggest tip and biggest piece of advice is that we figure out what are the things that you want to do in your home before we write the offer so that we can negotiate everything before you get to the design queue. So when we get there, today we had a budget for him to upgrade on a set amount of money that is supposed to cover everything. And we even came out a little bit ahead, which is always great to hear. So I know that some of you guys are also probably wondering what's going on with the neighbors. Last time I talked, I'll just give you a quick side note there. The foundation has been poured. There's foundation just sitting there now, and I believe they're just waiting for it to cure. And we haven't seen framing dropped off, but there will be a framing package dropped off, and then that'll be the next step. So anyways, getting into the design queue, first thing you start off with is, is your kitchen. So what are the things that you want to upgrade in your kitchen? Well, my biggest piece of advice is, depending on the builder, make sure to check things like what is included for the inside interior of the cabinets. Does it pull out all the way or is it a smaller um, pull out? So standard, a lot of them with Qualico don't completely pull out and they're not soft close. The doors are soft close, but not the drawers. So I do believe that's something that would be worthwhile investing in. This The first upgrade level pulls the whole drawer completely out and has soft close. Now, if you're building a house for 50, under 500,000, I'd stay with that upgrade. There are some other upgrades that include wood, um, wood dovetailed cabinets inside the cabinets that I would uh, recommend for homes that are over 500,000. You're still fine to use the other upgrade I just talked to you about, um, but do you want to account for that? Another thing you want to account for and check with the builder, are there pots and pans drawers uh, included? Pots and pans drawers, are really important in the kitchen because if you just have doors, it's not the greatest layout. So I would advise at least doing one side of pots and pans drawers. If your home is over 500,000, if it's over 2,000 square feet, I might recommend you do two sets of pots and pans on either side. You may not think to yourself you'd use that many pots and pans, but what we've done in the past is use them for serving trays and for um, dishes and things like that. So the pots and pans drawers is an upgrade, but it is worth it. It's not usually a whole lot of extra money. I would highly recommend doing that. Also in the kitchen, things you might want to consider is the hood fan. A big thing people are doing these days is putting the chimney hood fan in and getting rid of the microwave over the range hood fan. Now, if you're doing that, you have to make sure that that microwave, if you do want one, is going to go into a cabinet, which then is going to cost you more money. So you're paying not only for the extra tile behind the hood fan and the appliance itself, you're also paying for the built in cabinetry for the microwave hood fan and that trim kit for the microwave. So just think about if that's really important to you for a starter home. I would highly discourage doing this. Um, that's purely for cosmetics. You're not going to get a huge amount of resale versus having that cabinet with a microwave over the range hood check and see what that upgrade cost would be to see if it's worth it. Now, don't forget yours in this house and in the kitchen every single day. If it's really going to bother you, then maybe you should get that um, chimney hood fan. But resale wise, when you're in anything under 420, it's you're not going to see that money back. Anything over 450, you'd be safe. Uh, appliances, just be careful how much you spend. Uh, we don't want to have you spend too much on your appliances. We kind of talked about that last time. Um, other things to upgrade in your kitchen could be your backsplash. So backsplash, we call it the jewelry of the kitchen. And so be careful that you don't pick something so specific that it becomes very personal. And then you spend more money for it and you get less money when you sell because it's just so specific. Um, think about the cabinets materials. There are some really good standard inclusions. I would highly recommend staying with that. If your home is over $600,000, I would be more 
pushing you towards the custom side of the cabinets versus getting the cheap thermofoil. The thermofoil is a good product for the, the first time home buyer, even in the middle range. They've come a long way. They look really great. There's a lot of choices. You can do shaker or flat. But for the 600,000 plus homes, people are expecting a higher level of finishing. So if you don't upgrade, it will bring the value of your home down. So you can see how it depends on the size of the home and the price point of the home. Of course, we walk you through that every single step of the way. I really enjoyed doing that today with my client to keep him kind of in line, but also making sure that he's getting what he wants. And we can still find that look um, with, within your budget. So in the kitchen, uh, that those are the main things I would think about. If you want to raise your cabinets to the ceiling or have crown molding or have under the mount lighting, you really got to think again about your budget and that. We, we did talk today about an island size. The island is something huge. That is something that a lot of buyers are looking for. And I'm seeing large islands and I'm talking 10 foot, sometimes 11 foot islands in townhouse. Yes, townhouses with no condo fees have these huge islands. Um, the kitchen is obviously long and narrow instead of wide, but a lot of people like that aspect. So if you're building a house and you're looking at upgrades and your kitchen floor plan does not include a larger island, you don't need to go 10 or 11 feet. But if you have a substantial um, space, you want to make sure there's lots of counter space, not just the kitchen sink and the dishwasher. Because we looked at the original plan for him and it was just a 12 inch, which is standard for the overhang but we added another 12 inches and it still fits in the kitchen nicely. And it wasn't that huge of an upgrade. I think it cost with the extra countertop and um, the kitchen cabinets was an extra almost thousand bucks. Definitely worth your while because for resale, people want large kitchen islands. That's a big thing. Uh, the other thing that you might wanna consider upgrading in a kitchen is the thickness of the countertop. Sometimes it's included, the thicker one, but it's typically it's three quarter inches. And if you want that double size, you have to pay um, undermount sink, overmount sink. I would highly, highly recommend spending the money for an undermount sink for convenience of cleaning. Um, when you're looking at the sink faucets, we upgraded our sink faucet and paid extra money for it. And guess what? Splashes everywhere because it's just, it hangs too high. Um, so just think about what you're doing for your upgrades, what's important. Another uh, kitchen upgrade I like is the sill granite sink. We've had our sink for now over a year and there's no scratches on it. Stainless steel, it scratches the minute you start using it. So it does come at a lot cheaper price, but the sill granite sink is nice. Now, if you're again under 450, I don't worry about the sill granite. Stainless steel is completely acceptable. You want to be able to save money where it's important for you to spend money in other places. So in the kitchen, that's the majority of where you're going to be kind of spending that extra money. The kitchen cabinets, all that kind of stuff, those are the highest point of upgrades, the biggest price points. That's why they have you start in the kitchen. Um, railing is the other thing that is another really expensive upgrade. I know it doesn't seem like it should cost you a lot, but railing can cost you thousands of dollars and so think about that think about glass think about um, spindles think about paint grade versus wood stain those are all expensive so again that's something important we need to figure that pricing out before we write the offer so we can get you the discount on that prior to that if you put in the railing after of course you can do a railing after you remove conditions you're paying dollar for dollar for it and it's very expensive i'm talking a couple thousand dollars for railing even when it's small when it's whole bunch more railing, you're looking at $8,000, $8, even more sometimes. So those are the biggest tip uh, ticket items. So you want to think about what upgrades are worth doing. If you want to learn about the design queue, make sure you check out that video I just did that talks about what you can choose, how many selections they have. That's for any Qualico builders, such as Paysetter, Sterling, and Streetside. If you're building with any other builder, like Homes by Avi, uh, Coventry Homes, they all have their own design centers and have different kind of processes in which they do, but everyone has the ability to upgrade. So think about that. The other thing that I want you to think about too for upgrading is flooring. Um, a lot of the flooring that's included these days is a luxury vinyl planking, which I would highly recommend keeping with. Again, unless you are higher than $600,000, uh, you need to consider spending the upgrade for flooring. 
don't go too crazy, but make sure you kind of stay within what's included. Depending on the builders, you have more choices um, in order to upgrade your floors, but there's some really great options. We stayed all within budget today, um, being able to pick within what we've chosen. So if you have any questions about what upgrades are worth doing, and I didn't cover them here because we're not, we could talk about the whole house and it would take me all day, comment down below with some upgrades that you're thinking about, wondering if they're good for resale or if they're just, they should be done. Cause sometimes upgrades can deter you from actually having better resale because you could end up putting, um, oh, we, today we looked at pricing for a, like those jetted showers, $3,000. You do the math if it's worth spending on a house under eight hundred thousand. That is not expected in a house, and it's just kind of like over the top. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.